He is the Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney, Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. I'd like to wish my mother a happy birthday. Oh, very nice. What's her name? Evelyn Harvey. Happy birthday, And she's not Evelyn. listening, but... Why not? She could. Well, you know, she's probably working. Facebook stream, something. Yeah, she uh, she's not quite old enough to run for president yet, but she'll be 75 today. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Evelyn. <laughs> Also, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap, who recently discovered our app. Good morning, John. Good morning. Yes, I did. And actually, your mom could listen on the app. I'll, should I do it again? Yeah, go right ahead. <laughs> Alexa, tune to WRNR Radio, Martinsburg, West Virginia. <laughs> Apparently, yesterday I did that, and that actually triggered somebody's yes. device to to oh. shift to over. turn and listen. Hey, guys, a word about the, the radon thing. I, yes. used, I used to get involved with that stuff, safety engineer and all that. People need to know that radar, radon is dangerous, but it's also really easy to get rid of. So it's not a test like you find out you got uh, asbestos in your house and, oh, my God, we got to do thousands of dollars in, in remediation. remediation. Yeah. It's not like that. If you have the radon, all you have to do is... It's, Open a it's, window. Well, it's, if it's in the basement, that's hard to do, but it's, I got, it's I about ventilation. I got windows in my basement. Do you? Yeah. Well, this, I bet it's a walkout. It is. Okay. There you go. A lot of windows. You see, here I was doing a thing. It's not a compound. You know, I was, I was inspiring Fortress. people to go and get work done, and you, and you walk all over me. You know? It's, I'm out of here. This. <laughs> all right. That's one problem solved. Uh, radon, now fixed. Uh, in uh, studio with us, the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Good morning, Knowles. Good morning. I, I learned two things. Yes, sir. I learned how you can uh, stop John in his tracks. Yes. <laughs> and the other, John taught me that there is an app for WRNR. See? See, I didn't know that. And I've been coming here a long time. Careful, careful with your hands. You, you, you don't want to lift them and drop them because your mic will pick it all up. I got that. There you go. Sit on those bad boys. Keep wait, them warm. Wait, wait, wait. Get those so mittens over there. An Italian's telling someone else not to use their hands so much while they're talking. <laughs> I had to. He kept banging his mic stand. You notice what I do with my hands during the show? Passively soft and silent. Because if if you don't, every time you hit your table, I you heard get, you I heard, get that. I heard that. And I, I apologize. The, the audience sends me threatening texts. If he hits that table one more time, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, I like that's the, ones, the worst text that I get. I'm okay. <laughs> I like the ones who come in and they're so emphatic that every single point is emphasized <laughs> with a you know. Yes, keep your hands nice and quiet during the interviews. That should be on the. On well, the when wall. I went to school, I used to make sure I kept my hands. Because you'd get them smacked by you'd rulers. Get them smacked by a ruler. Or yeah, something, yeah, nuns. Yeah. They must have gone to school for that. Well, they were good at it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, for that, that that little twelve inch ruler that they would carry, mm -hmm. and they they'd have a hand on six inches of it, and still get you with that. Yeah. Last six inches. The, the problem, the plastic ones weren't as bad as the wooden ones that had that metal edge. I didn't edge, have plastic. <laughs> right? The metal edge and the yes. wooden ones, those are the ones that really got Would it. they engage the metal edge on your... Yes. I mean, that's, that's particularly aggressive. Catholic school was, uh, yeah. it was tough. Well, I mean, you could have behaved. Uh, who, you, who said I was misbehaving? Uh, Just, apparently the nun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the issue with school is you take young boys and ask them to sit still. Yeah for the better part of six hours. It's not in their DNA to do that. That's before we knew what AD had, what was that, yeah. AD&D or a whatever? ADHD, ADHD ADD. was. You know, a friend of they, mine, they used to cure, HDTV. They, yeah. they used to ca catch that with the ruler instead of a pill, right? <laughs> That's right. That's how I got cured. Was like, no copay on that, let me tell you. Some friends of mine teach in the, in the Dallas area. It's not Dallas per se, but the, the surrounding counties. And they said that until about 10 years ago, at the high school level, kids were paddled if you misbehave. Like actually taken into the... Well, it's Texas. In, in, yeah, I know. But I mean, that's wow. Not, that's, Texas isn't really in this country. It was its own country for a while. Well, now you're sounding like a Texan. Yeah. They don't... They have, you ask them. <laughs> oh, it's in their constitution. I got cousins that, that live in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, I got cousins that live in Texas. There's Texas and then there's everybody else. Don't mess with Texas. Kenny, let's talk about Lambert Pool. I understand we've had a solution. Yes. So, you know what? Lambert Pool has been a topic of conversation in this area for the last at least for eight, nine months, uh -huh. uh, being that the pool did not open. And and uh, city council, the city administration, myself, were, was adamant that we were going to find a solution one way or the other uh, to move forward with Lambert Pool to make sure that there's services over there on the north side of town for individuals there. So during the process, part of the, uh, we, we have engaged in a contract with CEC. It's an engineering firm that... that does all of our engineering scopes for the city 
uh, for the next couple of years. So we we tasked them with an order to to do three things: bring bring us two options, and also to check and see and bring somebody in to do a thorough uh, check on the existing Lambert pool. That being said, I mean we've you know we've 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 talked about different options of being up there. The problem with that, without having Lambert Pool open, would be that you're going to have to build it, and building it one would take more than one probably more than one season that it would be closed, and and two an awful lot of money, and and that would have to be done real quick, real fast, and and trying to raise that kind of money with one entity or a couple of entities on a knee-jerk uh, decision uh, just wasn't smart. So we went and we had uh, uh, CEC brought in Millennium. Millennium is the or, uh, organization that built the bridge, Bridgeport pool the, called the Bridge, uh, and uh, they maintain pools and they, they know everything about it. So they came in and, and did a thorough check, and they found out that that pool could be fixed uh, to be up and running for next year at a cost much, 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 much less than uh, anything that we could ever project. And uh, that pool now will be not not only uh, be fixed and ready to open, but it'll be opened by Millennium. We've asked uh, Parks and Rec to sign a contract with them to be able to have them come and, and professionally open the pool and to be able to make sure if there's any problems to fix them. That being said, uh, you know that pool then will be good for another five to ten years. That does not take away the uh, the uh, the two the two thoughts that that have come to uh, designs that we that we that we're working on for future expansion of uh, a pool, whether it be an indoor outdoor pool, whatever the concept may be. But at least at this point now, it gives us time to one have a pool that's open. And two, to be able to plan and financially uh, back with the plan that uh, we finally come up with. That cost is a hundred something thousand, Kevin. Yeah, it was a, it was a hundred thousand, and the city had put back back in uh, when this was all hit, when this all was all happening uh, in our unencumbered balance. We were able to put some money back to to be able to put towards future. Uh, decisions that we were going to have with the Lambert pool and, and so we we were well under the money that we had put away so we're very happy the city's very happy to I'm glad that the, the city the city council saw fit to to move forward and have that fixed the hard work between Andy Blake and and uh, Parks and Rec and everybody involved everybody worked together to make sure this is happening Back in the summertime, when when we first learned that Lambert pool was going to have a problem in the summer the diagnosis was pretty dire what did, did we fear or think was wrong with the pool that turned out not to be that got us to this much better news than it was before? Well, you know, first of all, uh, at that point, the city had no uh, hand in any of those decisions at all. That was a Parks and Rec's decision to be able to take a look at that and however their maintenance was or whatever at that time, I, I can't speak to. Uh, but that was the information that was passed on to all of us. And we just wanted to make sure that uh, before we move forward with any substantial financial investment over there, that we wanted to make sure that that was going to be a truly dead issue. And so we ended up uh, having CEC go in with Millennium, and, and this is the result we found. So we're very happy with how uh, we wish that this had happened earlier, but uh, unfortunately it didn't. And at this point we will be having a, a wonderful pool uh, for uh Lambert pool and for the people over in that area and Parks and Rec will have the, the pool fixed for them. And when five years from now, six, ten years from now, whenever the, the final fix is done, will it be a repair of the current pool or will there be a new facility? Well, built? see, there's, there's, there's the options that are on the, t on the table that, that we've discussed. Nothing's uh, solidified, so I, I, I don't want to speak to it, but uh, there was whether we would um, Build, if that pool was not operationally this year, would we build out front? Would we work on the front area? If the pool is operational, will we do something in the back area with some of the backland? So uh, those are some of the things that we're, we're tossing around now. So I would imagine that uh, anything moving forward uh, that, that we'll be looking at uh, any additions or anything new uh, that may come up will be on the back end of that building. Mr. Harvey. Mayor, it seems that uh, some exciting news beyond the pool is also happening with Martinsburg is the garage is really close to opening. Yeah, you know, I can't 
speak more highly of uh, Diego Lasada. Diego and, and I talk quite often, and you know he's made a huge investment into this city, and and uh, I, I could tell you that for him this is a long. Uh, a waiting process for him to be able to open. He was supposed to open up in the beginning of the summer, and, and you know, whatever the issues may or may not have been, he's to a point now that uh, on the 27th of January, uh, he will be having a grand opening. He's having a, a, a little get together for people that were involved on the 24th, and I, I believe that's a private invitation one for him to get things kicked off. But that that's huge because that leads into, you know, here here we are. We have a, a monument. We have the interwoven mill. They're, they're going to start um, uh, renting out there uh, in the springtime. Uh, so you're going to start having individuals now being able to see that they can walk two blocks to 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 have the you know whether it be a, a beverage or or something to eat and have a lot of different choices. So I think this is all kind of happening all in a great period of time where everybody's going to come together and all these projects are going to start to blossom and, and we're going to see a, quite a little bit of a, an explosion in that area. So if, if someone was coming from, let's say, Shepherdstown, like myself, and we wanted to come and enjoy the food, where would you recommend someone would find parking? Uh, you know what? There is parking available there. There's parking on there, site. There's parking on site. Uh, don't know. Uh, I, I don't know how many sites he has, but there's a lot of off street parking uh, in that area, which is typically not uh, taken up at this time. But I would imagine that 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 off street parking would be taken up now that this restaurant would be open. Kevin, are you still uh, 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 with the? Tell me the exact terminology for the, the municipalities. I am. The, what, what's it called? Uh, Municipal League, West Virginia Municipal League. Yes. There you go. You were the president of it for a while. Uh, I am, and I serve on the legislative committee, and, and, and I represent the state of West Virginia mayors in the uh, Southern League of Cities. And what is uh, on your legislative agenda for this year while the legislature is in session? You know, the, right now, the, we don't have any, any hot, to, hot topic or anything that we're specifically looking at. Uh, we're just sitting back and addressing things as, as they may or may not come up. But, but uh, at this point, we don't have a, uh, a huge agenda, if anything, to be able to, to worry about uh, what may or may not happen in the, in the state. The counties want home rule. What would you offer to them as, as advice uh, for words of wisdom to try to get their lobbying efforts through? And, and what would you say to the legislature? Well, uh, you know, I would say that uh, home rule has been a huge made a huge positive impact for to municipalities throughout the state. I also would say that uh, uh, if, if they were to get the, the home rule, to make sure that you're following the, the letter of, of the way it's written, because municipalities are following the way that home rule was written back in the day. Uh, some may think that it, it's a little differently interpreted, but that's not how it is in writing. And to make sure that uh, if they're, if they're going to implement that that one percent sales tax, to not put it over the cities within their counties, because the cities that already have home rule should not be penalized because uh, they they were given home rule uh, before the counties, and and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be beneficial to the uh, counties or the, the the cities if that were to be done. Take the one uh, percent sales tax out of it, and tell me the other ways home rule has benefited the city of Martinsburg. Well, I mean, there's there's things that we could do with that the city of Martinsburg has done with different ordinances that we were able to implement that uh, that could uh, help uh, move things along quicker and faster. Cuts a little bit of the red tape that in the past and, and, uh, and anything specific I don't have in my head right now, but uh, there's a red tape that you would have to go through the state or other organizations to be able to get things done. And, and it just makes it a lot smoother for uh, local government to govern and, and move things forward quicker and faster. You mentioned a couple of the projects earlier. Uh, are there any uh, businesses moving into Martinsburg that will be opening soon? Well, businesses have, uh, We I think we were the third in the last year, uh, third highest uh, city in the state that uh, brought in new businesses. So, you know, that's always a good sign. Uh, anything big at this point, I don't have uh, anything that I can discuss at this point that, that is moving to this area. We did see some movement over there at the uh, uh, the old Apple uh, storage place in, in uh, uh, on the north side of town, and uh, they should be they should be closing on that. 
I would I think they may have closed yesterday on that. And what you're going to see there is you're going to you're going to see a a collagen plant with um, with some uh, uh, some incubated businesses plus uh, a possible university he's talking about setting up over there. Uh, in regards to any infrastructure improvements during the calendar year of 2024. Well, we're, we are now in our going into our budget time, and uh, of course, stormwater management is a, is a big hot topic, and uh, Monument is really pushing forward. <coughs> Excuse me, sure. uh, pushing forward on their project. Uh, they they have a, a huge stormwater project that they have to have for that uh, facility. And keep in mind that uh, they're not the only ones involved. We 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 are financially involved in that with them. And also the state has, has stepped up and, and, and helped with that funding to be able to take care of any of those type of problems that we've had in 61 acres of that area. So um, you're going to start seeing construction or, or detours coming off King Street if you're driving in that way. Uh, could be a month or so that uh, you'll be tied up. Uh, those roads will be uh, torn up and, and putting new piping in and then new sidewalks and curbing and lighting and everything will be put in on the way back. So that whole area is going to see a, a facelift there in the next six months or so. Does the area along um, Interstate 81, excuse me, does any of that, how much of that belongs to Martinsburg as opposed to Berkeley County? You mean like Foxcroft Avenue? Yeah. Well, uh, well, Foxcroft is, is in the city. Uh, the, the city boundaries are, are not so defined it's it's a we would like i would like to see a more defined city uh, outline but uh uh you you oh, oh there are, you have for example you know where weiss market is mm -hmm. that's in the city but across the street uh where the retail commons retails, it, that's in the county so oh okay it, it, it goes back and forth in some areas so it's hard to judge i would guess the impact. Well, we hear about the the importance of a sales tax for the county <clears throat> is that we'll make millions of dollars off of the I eighty one traffic that comes and buys things. I guess my question was, do we have enough data for Martinsburg sales tax off of eighty one to to judge? Well, I mean, just sales tax alone uh, would be able to give you a good judgment, you know. And uh, you know, I know that uh, uh, the city of Martinsburg has always been conservative on on uh, kind of outlying and, and projecting that type of uh, sales uh, tax. And, and we've been pretty much online. It's somewhere between four and a half, five million dollars it brings in a year, which is a, a good uh, a good amount. Keep in mind, you know, Berkeley County would have more businesses than what the city does and, and more opportunity to be able to capture some of that sales tax. Do we yet know or do you yet know what the uh, city's share of the opiate opioid settlement is there's I, I do and i want to thank matt harvey and, and tim saya for uh, uh letting us know that we were receiving that check uh we i believe we our, our first installment was like 1.4 million uh, somewhere in that area uh we were we were supposed to get around 3 million but uh, due to some uh, uh litigation and and back and forth uh, we were so we settled on 1.4 you said first installment. Does that imply a second installment? Well, that's the that's the and Matt could maybe clear this up for me. But that is the monies that were directed to the to the municipalities and the counties directly. Now that uh, they formed the first foundation, which Matt is the chairman of, um, they there is a, a pool of money there that I believe it's in over the next ten years is going to be distributed based on. Uh, on needs and, and uh, things that, that would be described or, or approved by the first foundation. And has the city, has the discussion started of where that 1.4 is going to be spent? Well, we, we have put together what we call the the moral plan, a uh, moral program, and it's, um, I can't get into detail about it, but it's a, it's a program that we put together to outline what, uh, what somebody would need or what organization would need to be able to, uh, be identified as recipient to some of that money for the for the first go around and you know keep in mind you still have you know your services that you have to take a look at also but uh, you know like public safety services public safety service I mean one of the things that, that we're lacking here that that which I would love to see everybody get involved but I don't know how how that will happen I'm, I'm hoping that this is something that city and county and and others can get involved in is a uh, 
one thing that we've lacked from day one in this whole ep opioid epidemic is we forget that alcohol is the number one uh, addiction here in the state of West Virginia, and we don't have a public intoxication places. So law enforcement officers, they don't, or they can't arrest them and put them in jail. They're, so they're they're staying on our benches, they're staying in our offices. And there's not a, a public those. intoxication. There, law? there is not. There was one here years ago okay. with Eastridge. So uh, I'm going to have some. Th there will be talks that I'm going to. Um, bring forward to talk about what we can do to make that happen and how uh, some funding can help in that area so that we can, one, ease the pain of the officers and, and any of the calls they may have, and two, those services are going to be a lot better these days than they were uh, 10, 15 years ago when they had it because you'll, you'll have people on site to be able to address and talk to these individuals and hopefully give them the services they need to move forward without, um, without having any type of... Uh, uh, convulsions or, or, or anything like that. Matt, can you address the West Virginia First Foundation money? Well, it, it, you're talking about two different things. First Foundation money is is money that was put into the private foundation, which is you know titled the First Foundation. The counties and municipalities have are separate. Mm -hmm. And so the first drawdown was 24.5% went to the counties and municipalities, and the first drawdown was based on $300 million. So there's going to be over the next 10 to 15 years um, an, another 500 million dollars, and so 24 and a half percent of that will will flow out directly to the counties and municipalities, and 72.5 percent will go to the foundation. Now the foundation doesn't have oversight how counties and municipalities can can spend this money. That's their, it's their their responsibility. Uh, the only thing that they have to do is. Uh, pursuant to the MOU is provide the first foundation with a re an annual report on how much they received, how much they spent, and the impacts of that. And the purpose for that is so we don't duplicate spending. Let's say we, we're not going to open a – if Martinsburg opens a detox center, we're not going to come up here and open another detox center. It gives us, as board members, more information um, so we we don't duplicate or – More or efficient use of the money. Correct, correct. It, but it's not any sort of we're the overseer of how they spend their money. Mm-hmm. It's just a it's just the information sharing, and the the money as it was distributed, Kevin. Did the money say this much is for Berkeley County, this much is for the city of Martinsburg? Or was the negotiation of a lump sum? Then it became between the city of Martinsburg and Berkeley County as to how much the city got. Well, there was uh, uh, the city and the counties throughout the state were identified and were given their percentages of what they would receive, and and it was up to the counties and cities to to either accept that or. Or, con or contest it, and if they contested it, they they went be uh, they had arbitration, and then there was some some somewhere along the line there was an answer that came down that split the money to where it's at today with other, with not just Berkeley County but other counties in the state. Were you pleased with the percentage Martinsburg no. got? No, definitely not. Why not? Uh, we started off at forty nine percent, and then we got twenty five percent. Why did it drop by half? You know what? I couldn't tell you. Did you inquire? I was part of the process. I still, I still don't know why that, that that happened so much. How, if you were part of the process, how can you not know why or how it happened? Well, um, help me I, out here. I, th I think based on it was a, it was in court or it was an arbitration. It was arbitration. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it, it it went to it went in front of a judge, and then uh, the judge decided that um, the county had more of a a stand than the the the, the city did within uh, with what was going on at the time. And doesn't mean I have to like it. Was the methodology based on population ratio of incidents? I think incidents, that's what they. What? I think they tried to use that as a as a, as a standard, but uh, um, you know, mo most of the most of the problems were, were a lot of the problems were in, were in the city too. So, you know what? It, it, it was as far as I'm concerned, it's done. It's over with. Um, I don't want to bring up anything more about that. I, th I think it's 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 time for us to to move forward. Uh, you know, I when when it was time for for any any uh, they they wanted um, expert testimony from this area, I was the guy they called. You know, and and I, I took a personal, you know, I, I took it personally a little bit that that, that uh, we're only getting twenty five percent when I'm the mayor, and uh, and I did an awful lot of the work that's that was put here in this county to to make where it's at today as far as uh, the treatment aspect of things and and for for whatever reason not seeing fit that i wouldn't do that again for the city i just i took that personally so 
moving forward, it's it's a done, it's over. I have to move forward and, and work with everybody, and, and and that's where I stand at right now. Comparatively, did those ratios hold for other cities no. and counties in the state? No, no. So Berkeley was an outlier. Berkeley was the, was completely different. Yes. I would like to find out why. We are in our well. F- I, I, I could, the, the reason I, why is because they said the. That Berkeley County did more for the opioid uh, than the than the city did, and based on the information that they were given, and the information the city gave, the the judge saw fit that the county was right. Who is they? They were saying you, you, the county, like the commissioners, commissioners, uh, administration. Yeah. Okay. The, so it, it it they again, present evidence to that effect. They did. Okay. Yeah. Their evidence was good. So, Mayor, uh, the foundation, and, and for the listeners, we, 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 we still don't have an executive director, and we're working towards that. We're, we're pr- really new, but we do have a website that we're improving every day, but it's westvirginiafirst.org, and on that, um, which is unprecedented as a, as a private foundation, but we are, are keeping updated financials on there. So counties and, and people in the public can, can see where we've, how much money we have and where we've spent it. We also keep all of our meeting minutes there. Are, are you sending that out to the, all the municipalities and the counties uh, for them to be able to take a look at, or is that just something that we say on the air that hopefully somebody picks up and be able to read? We, we can send it to the municipal league. We've, you Not know, the I, municipal league, to, but to the municipalities in this region well, they can they can get on the website and look. I mean, right, but they well, don't I'm, know that, and a lot of people don't. Well, hear I, that's why I'm I mentioning it now is because this is some you know as as brand new foundation, we are still getting information out, and so gotcha. I'm, I'm I'm starting here today by saying you know we do have this resource available, and yes, we will be making efforts to to make everybody more aware of where they can go and find Great. information Great. and keep in this set in the in the vein of transparency. And on that note, we must end. Kevin, any final thoughts about anything else we didn't cover today? Not at all. But uh, like I said, that's bridge under the water, water under the bridge. And we're moving forward and working with Berkeley County to make things better here with the opioid epidemic. Thank you for coming in. Stay warm. Okay.